creative Hoosier, his dream comes true. Tony Storm wins the All State 400 at the Brickyard. Let the party begin. Hey, Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you. You know, for a long time, I've heard this thing about Tony Stewart's basement. Columbus, Indiana, where he grew up, never had an opportunity to come here. You know how busy Tony Stewart is. You know how busy we are in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway season. We finally found a few moments where I could drive down. Tony was in town to get a tour of that famous basement. But more importantly, talk a little bit to Tony about racing his love for racing and his love for giving back and the things that he's doing right now, no longer driving except on weekends in those sprint cars when he gets in them or whatever, somebody else convinces him to get in, SRX champion, all those things. But he's a promoter, he's a track owner. It's unbelievable how busy this guy is. Tony, thanks for uh, letting us spend a few minutes down here. Well, I'm glad you finally got here. We've only been talking about you coming out and hanging out. So you brought your crew with you this time so we won't do all the fun things that we do here on a on a weekly basis, but uh, glad you're finally down here at Hidden Hollow. I know you've been pretty busy. You have people here almost every week coming in, sponsors, charity folks, uh, but this is an amazing, I've heard an awful lot about it, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, right now it's pretty neat because it's so quiet, but let's just start wondering, but yeah. so you start out with the pinballs. So growing up in Columbus, Indiana, was there a favorite haunt of yours where you got to go in and play pinballs or how'd you get these machines here? No, anybody that truly knows me will tell you I'm 14 at heart. So uh, I told Leah when we got married that she was marrying a 14 year old which she figured out really quick was really accurate but i love video games i love pinball machines pinball games uh, i have a practical philosophy in my head about them i mean it's everything that we do in motorsports is all based on hand eye coordination so pinball machines and the action of the ball and how fast everything moves anything that you can do that keeps your brain yep. engaged quickly and, and where you're having to make quick decisions, I think is great for race car drivers. So for me, being someone that likes video games and arcades and pinball machines, this is this is like a playground for me. Pool table, obviously every basement has to have a pool table. Yours is pretty, oh, yeah. pretty cool. It kind of fits the motif here, specially built, I assume. Yeah, we found a company out in Colorado that built these and uh, fits the log home theme of the house, obviously. But uh, it's uh, something I'm really passionate about. I have some really good friends that are uh, pro billiard players with Jeanette Lee, uh, Shannon Dalton in South Carolina are good friends and uh, you know obviously when they've been here they annihilate me on a pool table <laughs> but it's I like playing people that are better than me because that's how you get better but uh, we enjoy that it's it's fun to come down here with this group of guys and uh, my buddies like to play so we uh, we, we get very very competitive when we get on this table together for sure. So you started the drag team? Did you decide to do that before or after you got a chance to take some runs on your own in Leah's car? <laughs> Actually, it was that weekend, uh, on Monday after that weekend is when I ran my fastest three runs in the car. So uh, I ran three passes. Uh, the quickest pass was a 3.76 uh, second lap at uh, 322 mile an hour. So it is, it is absolutely insane and it is crazy. And it's funny because the drag race guys think we're crazy driving dirt cars yep. sideways and we think we're, they're crazy starting from a standing start and a thousand feet they're running over 330 mile an hour. You just, I don't know how you would replicate the feeling of the G-forces taking off there and trying to keep your vision focused. I, I assume everything's moving around and shaking. And yeah, it, it's, that's where back to the pinball and back to where playing pool and video games and all the things that we do that I'm into that's where having that hand-eye coordination is so important to go from a standing start and as fast as the drag cars accelerate to be able to have your mind process the information to where you're seeing it. When I ran the Indy car at Indianapolis and, and stock car races at Daytona and you know sprint cars at Eldora, your brain will slow everything down so as fast as it's running as fast as you're going your brain will find a way to slow it down and it's that way in drag racing too but it takes time for your brain to slow it down enough right. to to make you really comfortable so it's uh, it's part of the process it's interesting to me because i can't think of any any other indie nascar driver than john andretti and you that have really done both more than just sort of a ceremonial or you know sort of a promotional pass so for you to go do 10 runs is a well i have to do an, i need to do an official nhra run because i want to beat john's best speed so so john and it was years ago and i don't remember how many years ago but they were just getting to that 300 mile an hour bracket right and uh, john's fastest run was 299 miles an hour right. so i've beat that but not officially beat it i have the time slips for it which make it legit but uh, in an NHRA competition John did that so uh, yeah, it'd be very cool to see you do that we'd all be excited to see that we'll continue around here but 
signature wall. These yeah, the folks this is that a visited the wall. Yeah. So, uh, and not everybody that's been to the the ranch here has had an opportunity to sign it. But we've we've done charity hunts here with kids with uh, the Catch a Dream organization, uh, different race car drivers. We've got. Uh, Jeanette Lee, the Black Widow, professional pool player. Uh, Parker Bowen the third, a PBA pro bowler. Jimmy Houston, pro angler that you see on TV. Every, we used to see him every Sunday morning. Uh, Linda Vaughn, of course. Uh, Jimmy John from Jimmy John's. Johnny Morris. Uh, we even have a guy that's pretty special to the Speedway. Uh, man that oh, yeah. hasn't forgot anything over the <laughs> entire course of his life, Donald Davidson. And he goes, we'll never forget this. Well, you don't forget it. He never forgets anything. <laughs> That's right. So, but uh, some really neat people that have been here to the property. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a lot of the kids from charity hunts and their families have signed it, their siblings, uh, to, you know, people that own major corporations that have been here. For sure. Well, we've been hearing some noise in the background. Yeah. I think it's back through <laughs> Lots here. Lots of noise. Into the, into those, through the saloon doors. Yeah, this, this was actually supposed to be uh, a, a poker room. And then when we got stuff built, it actually didn't fit. <laughs> we couldn't get, we couldn't get everybody, couldn't get the table in and have room for everybody to get by it. So uh, we ended up having to change things. But it's all the old classic games. Uh, we're here in track and field and Cuber yeah. making noise. Yeah, Frogger and Asteroids. Those are those are my era. Yeah, Asteroids, Frogger, Moon Patrol, Tetris. Like I say, a lot of these games are hand-eye. All all video games are hand-eye coordination, but. A lot of these games, like Tetris is a good one for hand-eye coordination because you can't just stop. It, it, pieces are moving and they're going to keep moving, so you have to make decisions and it's, that's what I like. I think that's what makes us better in a race car a lot of times or when you have scenarios and video games, Guitar Hero, another one. I mean, the notes are coming. Right. You can't just slow it down. You can't yep. hit pause. You have to hit everything on time, so I'm a big fan of uh, video games, uh, especially for race car drivers, because it's it's all about hand-eye coordination. That's yeah, pretty amazing. Now you got simulator games for for drivers, but this is the old school way of doing. Yeah, it. this was before we had driving <laughs> simulators. So. so now let's I kind of walk through the poker area, but to me, what I'm really excited about learning about is sort of this wall here on the other side <laughs> of the basement that I'm sure started out where you thought you had plenty of room for those helmets and. As our fans will notice in a minute, you've sort of run out of space. But then you got a race car we can talk about too, a pretty special 1997 car. But uh, how many helmets do you have now? I have over 350 racing helmets. That's amazing. So it covers everything. And they're not, all, not even all of them are racing helmets. We have uh, NHL goalie helmet, uh, supercross riders, football players, uh, to racing. So most of them are racing helmets, obviously. but. Uh, this this wall where, where all the helmets are back here didn't even originally wasn't even designed to be for helmets uh, we we actually designed it to be a trophy case and then once we realized we <laughs> had had more helmets than trophies that we decided to switch it up and, and make it a trophy case so uh, for, for the helmets which I I'm I'm proud of my collection here it's uh, we cover everything from Formula One IndyCar NASCAR a lot of dirt track racing uh, road racing, even drag racers. This this helmet is a pretty special one to me. This is one that when Carl Edwards and I raced for the championship in 2011 at Homestead, uh, this was the helmet in 16 that, uh, that he traded. He went back, found that helmet that he wore at Homestead in wow. the championship race, uh, and that's the helmet that he brought to trade with me. So uh, Carl's a class act, and uh, even he knows this helmet means the world to me to have this in my collection. So it's it's at eye level. I always want to make sure I can see that. And I have my very first uh, Xfinity helmets that I drove, uh, Harry Rainier's car. So I have those helmets down there. Uh, and then we start getting into this whole row are championship drivers in the Cup Series. And finally got it to where they start bleeding over into the other side over here. But I have all three of my Cup Championship helmets there, two from Two helmets for my buddy Dale Jr., three from Mark Martin, three Ryan Newman helmets, uh, Kyle Petty, uh, two Michael Waltrips, two Daryl Waltrips, Bill Elliott. It's amazing. And we have two Richard Petty, two Dale Sr. I have two of Jimmy Johnson's, which if I had to probably pick one helmet, this is probably the one that if I absolutely had to pick one, this would be my favorite. It's uh, Jimmy Johnson's seventh championship winning helmet. Oh, wow. And that was uh, in 2016, the day of my last race in NASCAR. 
he wins the championship. Got done with my interviews, went to the stage, congratulated him, gave him a hug. He goes, hold on a second, and told one of his people that was in front of the stage, they went to the car, got that out of the car, brought it back, wet, sweaty, everything, handed it to me. So That's amazing. I told him, I said, this is on loan. When you want this back, this is yours. And he goes, no, it's yours. So uh, I, I hope we get to keep it, but, if there's, <laughs> but I made sure and let him know, listen, this is special, and, and it's special to me, but at the same time, uh, down the road, if he ever wants that helmet back, that is definitely his helmet, and, and we'll go back to him. Pretty so the cool basement's guys. full of really cool stuff, and obviously I'm sure you've got all kinds of other things, but is this your favorite thing to really collect, our helmets? Or is there it is. I, I never collected anything before this, and, and my first helmet was uh, I traded with Elliot Sadler in 2000, and we were both rookies in 99 together, and uh, just one day went up to him and said, hey, you want to trade a helmet with me since we had a rookie year together? And that is literally how it started. And uh, it has grown to collections that come up for sale. Uh, and, and the neat thing is you meet people that are as passionate about helmets as I am. And right. you might have two of a driver's helmet and they have one of what you want. So you find a way to trade helmets with other people. But the ones that come and the, that have come from drivers, I'll, I'll never never trade those out because that's I feel like that's a special bond that drivers have with each other and you know to, to trade with each other I feel like is something that's special that you just don't let it get away yeah absolutely you know we've got our brickyard trophy there and then the big big yellow blob on the wall was so did you is was this what you joy. built the did you know this was going to go in here before you built the basement and you built the basement around it or how did this come about on this wall this is what we planned was to have this car mounted on the wall we uh, this is the car that I won uh, not the car that I won the championship in, but this is the car I ran uh, in 98 at the Indy 500. So obviously it has the one on it because we were the series champion from 97. And uh, unfortunately we had the lead at lap 22 and then the motor blew in this car and uh, stopped at the top of turn one. And then again, the first, I, sure I had the greatest matter. level of frustration yes, that I've had in any yeah. car because I didn't know that I was going to get an opportunity. I thought that was my last opportunity to win an Indy 500. So, uh, you know, again, it was a year that I felt like we had good speed and had a car that was capable of winning. It wasn't near as dominant as the 96 car, but uh, this car was, was definitely uh, had the speed to, to win the, the Indy 500 that year. So you, you ran five Indy 500s. You're really the first person to do the double right, and by that I mean you actually finished both races, which you know people talk about those 1,100 miles, but you were the first one really to do the 1,100 miles and complete them uh, five times. I know I remember Roger Pinsky from the podium one time at the NASCAR banquet saying, Tony, you come run a car. Obviously, that's probably not something you're going to do in the future, but um, winning the Brickyard 400 for the first time and the second time is the 15th, 15th anniversary of that second win. Did that help put a little bit of that 500 desire behind you when you got to climb the fence at the Speedway? It did. It didn't 100% it didn't replace it, but at the same time, that was as close as I was going to get to winning an Indy 500. So uh, to win at the Brickyard 400 was super special, not only once but twice. But the first time, it was a really, really hot day. I was nauseous after the race. I was so excited and celebrated so hard in the car and then uh, celebrated so hard getting out that all of a sudden I got really queasy. I thought I was going to get sick out there, but I'm dying right now. <laughs> Too tired to chase fences right now, but give me five minutes. I'll be ready. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, to see my family and friends that, that come to the race each year and to finally be able to celebrate a win at Indy was that's that's your childhood dream is to win at Indianapolis. A couple of years later, you you do it again, and and uh, not a lot of people get to win there once, but let alone twice. It's kind of cool that you're a, a multi-time winner at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And the second time was definitely uh, we got to enjoy it more while we were still at the track. The first year there was so much pageantry around it and media around it that uh, the day was basically over and it was like, what happened? I mean, I don't even remember what happened after the race. Second time, we definitely got to savor the moment and enjoy it. You know, look at all these short track helmets makes me think about 2016 and your retirement and us trying to figure out what to do. And we thought, let's just build that fake dirt track inside turn three. And that was really a promotional stunt. It was a way to just have some fun together. You were going to come. You actually ended up getting in a car, which was a lot of fun for everybody. But more importantly, I think what that was, that was the roots to what is now the BC39. And we got to share a special moment that day with Brian, obviously not knowing how that was all going to end. 
but you lo have always loved the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, maybe second only to your love for short track around the country. So when we had an opportunity to marry those two together, uh, how important do you think it is for us to have that racetrack, and especially the BC39 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? To the dirt track community, it's huge. And, and I think probably one of the most special moments I saw was seeing Roger there last year and seeing how excited Roger was because Roger's a purist as well. And to know the history of the, the oval, but to see and to see how important it was to the racing community to have a track where there's so many more people that will never have the opportunity to compete on the road course or the oval, to have that opportunity to come race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the dirt track. It's, it's perfect. I mean, you, you have the best of three worlds now. You have the most iconic historic oval in the world, a very awesome road course, and a very, very cool dirt track all in the same facility. There, there isn't anywhere in the country like that. This first row is all Indy 500 winners. So uh, some pretty cool ones in there, obviously, uh, that you mentioned. I mean, AJ's here, of course. Uh, and AJ is disputing this a little bit, but I, I'm fairly certain we're accurate on this. This is AJ's 64 winning helmet uh, that I got from, from the Jones family. That Bud Jones used to be a photographer at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for years, and he was uh, friends with AJ, and AJ used to stay with, with Bud and Susie. But um, cool helmet, obviously. Uh, the Al Unzer helmet I got here, I, I had two missed calls from an Albuquerque number. I'm like, ah, oh, telemarketers are really busy. I didn't answer two calls from Allen's or Senior, which I regret to this day, but the third call that came through uh, was on Saturday and I answered it and Al, Al and I talked for 45 minutes and he knew I had a helmet collection. So Al actually sent me this helmet. This was one that he sent, uh, but just really cool guys. I mean, I, I think the world of Ari Leyendijk, uh, you know, I got to race with him my time in, in IRL and he was the toughest guy by far that I raced with there. Uh, didn't matter what track we went to, he was, he was the guy that I was worried about every week to, yep. to have to beat. But uh, such cool, iconic people that have won the Indianapolis 500. And I have some Formula One drivers, some guy named Hamilton that yeah. used to win a lot. Uh, and another guy that used to win a lot too, Michael Schumacher. And uh, got a chance to spend some time with uh, Magnuson who drove for Gene Haas. We, we got an opportunity to take him to North Carolina and put him in a wing sprint car on dirt, which oh was goodness. a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's nobody in the Formula One world that would ever let their drivers go do something <laughs> like that, but Gene Haas was awesome about it and thought it was really cool. Uh, Never ends. Yeah, <laughs> even Leah's helmet that, I don't even have one of my wife's helmets in the collection. She has every helmet she ever raced and will not give one up. And, and at this point she's softened up a little bit and she's like, oh, I'll give you one. I'm like, no. If you have all of them, keep all of them that you've ever had. So, uh, but that's the that's the helmet she had on when she crashed two years ago in St. Louis, and the car folded in half. So, uh, we had to, to take that to some doctors so they could see where right. where she had contact with the helmet. But uh, got to keep her healthy. We kind of we kind of like her a little bit. <laughs> well, I appreciate the time. I think uh, we'll wander back through the the casino. Um, now worth, that you're making such big money at the track yeah, here, yeah, I mean, being the boss and everything. <laughs> not exactly working that way, but that's okay. <laughs> um, no, this is, we, we have fun. I, I love, I love going to Las Vegas and we, uh, we just, we just play with fake chips down here. It's, uh, well, I, I, I always I, like the action. A couple years at New Year's, Dick Jordan used to always have his event that he loved the fact that you came and, and I'm sure Dick's excited that you're carrying on sort of a tradition that, that you'd help Dick start in terms of just getting buddies together and having a good time and, and really just enjoying and bench racing. Yeah, we do. We, we utilize the poker table and have a group that'll come down and play and we we'll always have either races or, uh, you know, ball games on TV to watch while we're playing. But, uh, you know, inevitably at some point they they end up gravitating toward the roulette wheel or the blackjack table over there and we have some fun. So it's uh, it's something I like. I mean, I love going to Las Vegas. It's uh, I like the action and uh, to be able to have tables here at home where we can not necessarily practice. It's everybody thinks they're going to come up with a with a system that's going to work and you're always going to get paid on. There is no such system, but it's uh, it's fun to try different things and uh, you know, have fun down here. That's great. So I think we'll we'll end it over here. I know you've got a golf room, so when folks are here, they get a chance to do some inside golf. But you also have a bowling alley here. A couple yeah, of I've got I've got a couple PBA Pro Bowlers, Sean Rash and EJ Tackett, that we uh, help sponsor a little bit. But uh, 
We've, we've had a lot of events here. Go Bowling's had events here at the house where they brought contest winners. Uh, Die Hard Batteries, we had contest winners that were here and we bowled for a while and we had, had them in on the golf sim, played pool, did, we did everything down here. It was like a bunch of kids in a playground that got turned loose. But we, we've had a lot of fun down here. Uh, Sean comes down here and throws one ball and if he doesn't throw a strike on the first ball, it's a, it, the next 12 balls are strikes and I'm just trying to get one strike in a game. Right, so uh, right. he, he's way better than I am, but it's it's fun to have friends that, uh, like we said, you know, Shannon Dalton and Jeanette Lee uh, on the billiard side. It's neat to have friends that were at the, we were at the top of our games and uh, in our different respective fields. And you know, when they come down, you get a great appreciation for why they're so good at what they do. Right, well, I appreciate you taking the time to show us the basement. Like I said, I've heard about it, hadn't had an opportunity to get here, but more importantly, Thanks for continuing to be such an ambassador for our sport. You retired from driving at the cup level, but you're still active as a driver in a lot of different series, uh, owning the SRX, owning the racetrack, owning all the, uh, the all-star series. I mean, all the things that you do, there's not a better ambassador across the board for racing, for Central Indiana, for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway than, than you, Tony. I really, really appreciate your passion. You want to close this out and throw a couple balls here? If you if you beat me at this, I, I might. Have I'm probably going to do a gutter ball on this. Thing, so, <laughs> well, don't do it on purpose. So, are these are the weights, I assume? Yeah, these are the weights. These are these are balls that are drilled for me. So, uh, they may or may not fit you, but All but right. there's plenty of balls here to choose All from. Right. So, I'll go so first. So that right way for the big ball, he goes for the big heavy. Well, let's go for it. There. I can't remember last time I right went bowling, but uh, this lane work okay? Yeah. Here we go. Gutter ball coming up. Okay, so Nate. Obviously, he's not working in the office as much as he's telling Roger he's working in the office if he's doing that right out of the gate. That's so wrong. All right, let's see what my first ball produces here. All right, we're going to end it on that note. Again, Tony, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Glad you came, bud. Good luck the rest of the season. We'll see you at the racetrack. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. fans. We'll see you soon.